Hello, my name is Mike Titterton and I'm a professor in social inclusion with the Higher School of Economics, Moscow. School. My talk today is about the publication of a themed issue of the journal Social Policy and Society on comparing Russian and European Union welfare polities. I'm the co-editor along with my colleague Professor Linda Cook of Brown University. Over the course of my career, I worked in both academia and in policy and practice settings in Europe, Asia and Africa. As well as my professorship, I work as an international expert providing technical assistance to international organisations such as the European Union and World Bank, and also to government ministries and civil society organisations. This involves working in low and middle income countries in sectors such as social, health, education and justice. Typically, this involves issues to do with social policy, inclusion and protection, usually in relation to best practice and international legislation. My special focus is on the most at risk, the highly marginalised and excluded communities and groups that exist in our societies. This includes people with mental health problems and disabilities, vulnerable migrants, people living with HIV, prisoners and drug users. I'm interested in enhancing their well-being and improving their access to resources such as social services, healthcare, education and employment opportunities. This often involves various forms of comparative research globally, regionally and between and within countries and sectors. We undertake such comparative analyses because they can throw light on questions to do with variations in the formulation and implementation of welfare policies and their results. Comparisons can tell us why some approaches to tackling social problems work well in some countries and contexts, but not others. They can answer those queries posed by policymakers, donors, service providers and service users, as well as promoting the sharing of vital know-how across regions and across countries. One country often left out of such comparative exercises is the Russian Federation. In early 2020, working alongside Professor Yona Yaskara Smirnova and her colleagues, Linda and I helped set up the International Laboratory for Social Integration Research at the Higher School of Economics, Moscow. Our aim was to encourage the conducting of high quality research of an international nature by university staff and students and international partners. This has included studying the experiences of excluded groups like migrant children and children with disabilities. As for so many other people, there have been difficulties caused by the coronavirus pandemic and by the conflict in Ukraine. Our themed issue for social policy in society represents one of the outcomes of this work in close collaboration with scholars from other countries. Under the title, Mapping the Shifts in Russian and European Welfare Polities, we focus on contemporary Russian Central East European states that joined the EU from 2004 onwards and the older EU 15 states. Our goal here was to integrate study of these welfare states within the common framework of what is sometimes called new social risks. These risks include aging populations, destabilized labor markets and family structures, large scale immigration and accumulated welfare commitments. We argue that Russian and European welfare states have been confronting a set of these new social risks. These risks have produced broadly convergent social policy challenges and agendas in labour market policies, pension and demographic reforms, and since 2020, a new social crisis, COVID-19. Despite broadly parallel paths of post-war expansion and contraction and the shared challenge of these new social risks, these welfare states have rarely been studied within a single comparative framework. Our theme section kicks off with a state-of-the-art paper by Linda and myself. 
that expands on the comparative context and the conceptual framework to the case studies. As EU welfare states are more familiar, the more studied, we focus on the Russian case and we bring it into comparison with these other cases. Drawing on literature from the new social risks agenda, we highlight common challenges with which policymakers across the continent grapple and compare their responses, setting the stage for the case studies that follow. We elaborate also on the welfare polity framework, which we argue allows for considerably greater scope and flexibility when comparatively analysing political economies that defy easy categorization across the region as varied as Europe. I'll say a little bit more about this approach in a moment. Our case studies show that government responses to shared new risks are not consistently liberalising, nor do they have a single logic leading to a coherent new welfare model. For these cases, policy responses have been crafted to solve problems, mixing liberal, status, universalist, conservatives, familiarist and ad hoc approaches and principles. Our case studies include a comparison of pension policies in post-communist Russia and Hungary, a focus on efforts by governments in Poland, Russia and Hungary to stem population decline through pro-natalist incentives and family policies, and a comparison of policy responses to economic and social impacts of the COVID-19 crisis in Russia and Finland. One key finding is that European Union 15 welfare states are no longer characterised by the stable institutions and political processes and welfare regime typologies. Instead, we have developed the concept of welfare polities to structure comparisons. This is a much more fluid concept than welfare regime, designating as it does the normative framework, policy capability, the institutional capacity, and social and political movements that shape and constrain welfare state change. Our suggestion is that this notion offers a potential for re-examining the interaction of state and market, associated political philosophies, and opportunities for political and institutional renewal in a comparative manner. Our case studies confirm the convergence of new risks and challenges faced by Russian and new European welfare polities. Our evidence suggests, however, that the broadly shared new social risks are driving European and Russian welfare agendas in multiple directions. This is an intriguing development that makes for a very rich research and development agenda for scholars, policymakers, and for funders alike. We would like to see in the future further comparative research efforts in cooperation with international scholars involving the Russian Federation and other post-communist states with Western nations, particularly on the topics of social integration and inclusion. If I had to highlight just one item on an extensive list of gaps, I would like to draw attention to the pressing need for the development of systematic cross-national and temporal data sets on the design and implementation of social policies. This is something called for by several researchers over the years with respect to other regions. And it would be something that would be especially valuable for scholars and policymakers in respect of the region that we're talking about today. Finally, I would like to draw this talk to a close with a word about the present conflict in Ukraine. I have worked in all three of the countries most deeply involved, namely Ukraine, Russia and Belarus. And just last month, I saw some of the knock-on effects of the turmoil when I was working in Latvia. It is all too evident that the Ukraine conflict has had devastating impacts on the civilian population and on the infrastructure of local welfare states. Millions of refugees have crossed borders into neighbouring countries and many more have been displaced within the country. 
It is equally clear that at this time of intense difficulty, international cooperation and comparative research among Eastern and Western scholars is now more important than ever. Working together and sharing knowledge about the problems facing welfare states and how best to respond in volatile geopolitical contexts is critical. We very much hope that our themed section and our other work represents a contribution towards meeting this extraordinary challenge. I'd like to thank you for listening to me and I hope that you have found some inspiration from this talk. I wish you good health and well-being for the future.